Hey guys, welcome to August Lights Perfume YouTube. And let us continue without wasting any time. This is the second installment, the second video in my mini perfumery course. And let's continue. So now you know your stuff, your basic stuff about what perfumery is, all about alcohol, what alcohol to use, what alcohol to avoid. And you know how perfume is classified and the basic terminology, how do you classify perfume and what do you call what perfume. So in this video, all this video is going to be about is your some additional chemicals which you must know about. All right. So let's get started. Now, we're going to be discussing about a bunch of chemicals here, right? Five types of chemicals in particular that we're going to be discussing about. And if you want your perfume to be next level, if you want your perfume to be anything like the perfumes that are in the market, that professional level brands are putting out on the shelves in the market, if you want your perfumes to be anything like those, you definitely want to add these chemicals, or at least some of them, into your perfume. Some of them are mandatory. You definitely, definitely do want them. Some of them are totally optional. So let's go through them one by one. First is your fixatives. All right. And the second type of chemicals is your diffusives. The third type of chemicals is your solvents. Right. And the fourth type of chemicals is your caviar oils. The fifth type of chemicals is your colorants, which is basically perfume color. So let's discuss them in detail and what these chemicals actually are and what they do one by one. So number one, fixatives. Now what a fixative is, is basically any chemical that is added into your perfume which increases the longevity of your perfume. Now what I mean by longevity is it increases first the shelf life of your perfume so the perfumes are not going to go bad they're not going to expire quickly they'll expire in at least one and a half to two years so sometimes even longer than that if you have added a good quality fixative into your perfume and it also increases how long lasting your perfume is how long can you smell your perfume on your body so you definitely want a fixative in your perfume now moving on, the second type of chemical that we're going to be discussing about is obviously your diffusives. Now what diffusives are, they're basically, diffusives is a, any chemical which is added into your perfume which helps with the projection of your perfume, right? What projection is, is basically from how far apart can you smell a perfume, right? Do you ever notice when someone applies a perfume, the whole room smells of that perfume. If that happens with any perfume, that is a good sign that that, per that particular perfume has great projection. If the projection of your perfume is weak, that is a bad sign. It's not going to be a good product. People will have to come really close to you and literally sniff you like a dog to even tell that you have something on. So the projection of your perfume is very important. You do want good projection. All right? Now, the third type of chemicals, which actually are, not, they're not even a chemical at all, but I just use the word chemicals to simplify things here, okay? So don't mind that, is your carrier oils. Now, you already know about carrier oils. Carrier oils are sort of an alcohol, you can say, alternative. If you want to make alcohol-free perfumes or if you want to make natural perfumes, you can just... You can technically mix carrier oils with essential oils and be done with it, right? That will be your natural perfume. But this video, this series, in fact, is not about natural perfumery. So why am I even mentioning carrier oils here? You see, I like mixing a little bit of carrier oil with my alcohol just to give the alcohol the properties of carrier oil because, you know, it's just a good mixture to have, in my personal opinion. It's totally optional. You don't really need to have carrier oils in your alcohol. But I really like to make a mixture instead of just using alcohol because, you know, both your alcohol and your carrier oils are going to dilute your fragrance components. So I just like having a little neat mixture of these two. It makes your perfume more oily, a little thicker, makes the liquid more premium, right? If it's too watery, it's not going to feel very premium. So it's a good practice in general to have a little bit of carrier oil in your perfume along with alcohol. 
So what's next? Next we have your solvent. Now what a solvent is, you might have learned it as a kid, is anything which has something mixed into it. For example, when you mix, when you mix salt with water, water in this case is a solvent, right? In perfumery's case, in a perfume's case, obviously your alcohol is a solvent because everything is going into your alcohol, right? Alcohol is the big player. Alcohol is what your perfume majorly is. So everything is mixed into alcohol. So alcohol is technically, by definition, the solvent in your perfume. Yeah, sure. But the solvent that I am going to discuss about is an additional solvent, except for your main alcohol, which we're going to add in with your alcohol. Now, what adding an additional solvent does is it evens things out a little more. It helps you know hold notes in harmony and just mixes things a little more and allows everything to settle within itself which is why i also like to use an additional solvent and the next thing the fifth type of chemical that we're going to be talking about is actually colorants right now colorants are actually really optional in fact we're not even going to discuss colorants here i'm just going to mention them right now i'm going to explain to you what a colorant is just because this is a course and i need to make everything proper a colorant is any color that is added to perfume to give it a distinct recognizable different desirable color that you want now it's totally a cosmetic thing it doesn't actually do anything for the quality of the product for example if you've made a perfume which is silver for example this perfume this little bottle here this perfume is totally transparent it's silver if i want it to be for example like this perfume that i made here like gold colored i definitely would want to use a colorant right to make it gold colored because maybe i think gold colored is more premium or maybe stuff like that so i would want to use gold color in my perfume now i will make a separate video about colorants colorants are totally optional i want to make i want to teach you how to make a perfume here right so all the cosmetic things and additional things can be discussed in a later series so these were your five types of chemicals again fixatives second diffusives third is your carrier oils fourth is your solvents and fifth was your colorants which are totally optional now let me give you a couple of examples because you will soon realize if you research that there's a lot of things available in the market and you will be confused for example when it comes to fixatives there's a dozens dozens of fixatives available when it comes to diffusives there's dozens of diffusives available so what do you do there's tons of carrier oils available so my purpose to tell you all of this my intention behind telling you what i'm going to tell you right now is just to give you recommendations after a lot of time of researching stuff so it may save you time it is highly likely that if you research on your own you might come to the same conclusion as me but this is coming purely from my opinion and all the examples and recommendations i'm going to give you are based on my research and what works the best for me so what fixative to use what diffusive to use there's tons of them in the market there's dozens of them so what do we do well here's a few recommendations if you're starting out and even if you're on a intermediate level these are great recommendations for my fixatives fixatives if you remember the things which increase the shelf life and longevity of your perfume i like to use galaxolite this is a bottle of galaxolite here which i've been using for a while now right i just packaged this myself so never mind the the shady label and the bottle but anyways so yeah galaxolite here for example now what galaxolite is this is plain unscented white musk is what galaxolite is it's obviously a fixative now let me tell you one thing i like to look at these chemicals that we're discussing right now be it your fixatives or diffusives for just their diffusive properties for just their fixative properties right and their perfume altering qualities which they give to my perfume i don't necessarily like looking at them as something which is going to add an additional aroma additional scent or smell or fragrance to my perfume because what that does is that confuses me and that makes the complication more complicated than it needs to be for example there's tons of fixatives available in the market which are scented which have a scent of their own but i am not adding these chemicals to 
give off a fragrance in my perfume, right? I am just adding them because this chemical here, the electrolyte, is a fixative and it's going to help my perfume be more long lasting. It's going to increase its longevity. That is the reason why I'm adding it. Now, I don't want this to give off any smell, which is why I have picked these certain chemicals, which I'm going to be telling you about right now, because all the options that I'm going to tell you right now are unscented. Even if they have a scent, it's very minimal. It's not going to overpower anything. It's not going to overpower your actual fragrances that you're going to be using. So for your fixative, I would like you to use Galexolite. I would like you to really consider this, and this is a great option. This is pure, unscented white musk. Now, on to your diffusive. Now, what I like using for my diffusive is Isoe Super. You might have already heard about that. It's really popular. Now, notice what it says on the bottle. Smooth, woody, amber. That's what it says. Now, Isoe Super is a diffusive, and it's basically... Again, it makes your perfume more radiant, more fuzzy, and helps with the projection of your perfume. Now, Isoe Super, most of the people, even intermediate perfumes, cannot smell Isoe Super. If you add it in little quantities in your perfume, you're not even going to be able to tell that something was added into the perfume. So, But if you still ask me if Isoe Super actually smells like something, I would say it smells a little woody, a little amberish, a little rustic, I would say. But honestly, it doesn't really smell like anything to majority of the population. So that's what I like using for my diffusives, ISO Super. Now, let's come to our carrier oils. Now, let me just take this beaker off for a while. Now, there's a lot of carrier oils available in the market, right? Both scented and unscented. You can buy scented coconut oil and use it as a carrier oil. You can buy unscented cold-pressed coconut oil you could buy something like almond oil and use that as a carrier oil what I like to use is something more perfumery proper which is DPG here again don't mind the bottle please I just package these myself for my own comfort for my own convenience what I like using for my carrier oil is DPG DPG is dipropylene glycol that's the full form now what DPG is is a totally unscented carrier oil it doesn't have any scent of its own making it ideal it still has all of the good qualities of a carrier oil which is why i love using dpg now again remember what i told you about carrier oils even though this course is not about natural perfumery but you still should know technically i could make a perfume just using this carrier oil which is dpg and let's say this vanilla essential oil right here i could just mix both of these and be done with it i could technically make a fragrance right i could make mix this vanilla and this citronella with dpg in desired ratios and call it a day and make it a totally natural alcohol free perfume even technically i could do that so this is what i want you to remember about carrier oils you can make a perfume that alcohol using carrier oils again that is not what this video is about what this series is about i just like having a little bit of carrier oil dpg as my carrier oil mixed in with my alcohol to sort of give my perfume both the quality of qualities of alcohol and the desirable qualities of carrier oils so dpg for your carrier oils now next is your solvents now what i like using for solvents and this is something which basically all of the professional brands out there are using right distilled water if you've used a perfume chances are it di it definitely had distilled water into the perfume now water this is not mineral water you don't want to use mineral water again if you're just starting out you can you know make changes here and there but i would recommend that you use distilled water if you want to be more perfume professional and proper if you want to be more perfumery proper so distilled water why is distilled water used now first of all like i said it's used in all the major perfumes out there and there's multiple reasons now, water, as you already know, is a universal natural solvent. A lot of things can mix into the water, so it's generally considered a good practice adding in a little bit of water into your perfume to just to let everything mix up, right? Not a lot, just a little bit of distilled water. And another reason why distilled water is used is to cut costs. Like, per bottle, you save some money 
because water is definitely cheaper than alcohol but that is not really you don't even save that much money maybe a few cents it's not even worth it the actual reason is that some perfumers claim that using distilled water can actually make your perfume stronger in fact now I'm unsure of this claim as to how you know accurate that is but I personally have witnessed it because everything can mix up a little bit better in water so it's definitely a good general practice to use a little bit of distilled water into perfumes now the next are colorants now I'm not even gonna show you you know a colorant here a colorant basically helps your perfume to it basically helps you give a desired color to your perfume it's totally optional you can skip it if you're already satisfied with your perfume or you can add them if you're not so these were the five types of chemicals that I sort of wanted to discuss about in this video and I hope you like this video we are going to be continuing the series in the third installment of this series and like share and subscribe and comment if this was helpful and again visit our Facebook visit our Instagram check us out and I will see you guys in the next videos take care